Hi guys, I'm going to do a little demo on your sphere. I'm going to do it sideways here, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a little off, forgive me. I'm going to do it sideways because of the way I have the camera set up. So I'm going to make a circle as best I can. Establish sort of where the cast shadow is going to be. Falling off it like that. Something like that. And I'm going to now establish the light shape, shadow shape, excuse me. So we're going to define how the light is hitting the sphere by the shadow shape. I'm going to rough it in with an overall tone. Have an eraser on hand. So you can clean things up if you want. If you want to get some some charcoal out of the out of the light mass. So so again, I'm going to figure out where where the shadow is and where the cast shadow sits. Filling it in. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take your pit tissue, your rag, and I'm going to push it into the paper. And I'm going to blend it out into the, the mid-tone of the paper a little bit. Create a really soft transition out of that half tone. It'll also help sort of make a solidness to the shadow itself. You can at this point, if you want, if, if it's gotten out of hand, you can cut back against it. You can even do a little bit of hatching if you want. If you want to cut back and reshape that mid-tone a little bit. Um, see how you can then blend that back out. Now I'm going to come back with my darks again and reestablish the shadow shape again. Now, so you're, you're basically at this point, you're still working with really a two value statement, light, dark, light, dark, not looking at a lot of differentiation within it. At this point, I may want to put, if, I, if I'm observing something like a core shadow where there's a reflected light here and the mid-tones here and a slightly darker uh, shadow appears a little bit here, which is really just an optical effect of a, the reflected light being lighter than the middle of the shadow mass there. And that's up to you how you how you want to emphasize that or de-emphasize that and how much you're observing it on the actual uh, thing you're observing. Um, and I'm going to, again, smush it in a little bit. Soften it a little bit, but I'm really thinking of this of the of the shadow shape, and I'm being deliberate with it. This last little bit here is called the terminator, where the where the last bit of midtone ends and the shadow begins. I'm gonna start being a little more crisp and decisive with my shape of my cast shadow. And maybe being a little bit less less harsh with it as it goes away from the object. Um, so this will appear like a slightly softer edge back here. Not sure if that looks good or not. Okay. Um, so the object that we're really looking at here is the difference between a form shadow and a cast shadow. How this is a hard harder edge down here, and you can establish that by something like a dark that fades off, if you want. There's, this is an occlusion shadow down here, which is means there's no reflected light. This would also be called a pit shadow. And that will help define where the ball's hitting the, the shadow. But again, the shadow masses and the, and the occlusion shadow all seem to be part of one shadow mass, okay? Um, so, Whereas this is a sharper line, you see this is a softer edge, a softer line, because this is a form shadow, right? 
it's a different type of edge, a different type of turn of form. Okay? You guys all following me at home? Soften it a little bit. Come back to it. Now, so that I think is a pretty good establishment of light and dark, but there's no form within the lights. So for the for the light mass, how are we going to establish this? Pick a sort of center of the light mass and start very lightly working out from that center space to create the light on the form. How it's going to bathe and be soft coming around. Okay? You want to use the paper as that mid-tone transition. So it's going to start from a really opaque color here and I'm going to keep building it up and working it out. It's this opaque white and it's going to fade out to the paper and you can keep squinting if you want to see how it's affecting the overall bit. And I, ideally you want that paper to show through where it, it transitions softly out of the shadow into that mid-tone and then the white takes over. Now we'll contrast that soft approach there with a harder, sharper edge here where we're really showing that that is a cast shadow. There's a hard contrast and I'm, I'm feathering this white out a little bit so that it looks like it's a plane here. But you see how just by adding this, this harder contrast there, we create that saw, that cast shadow, bop. So different than this shadow, this light mass here. Slowly blending in to the, to the shadow form. Now on this edge over here, I'm going to, if I want to pop it and make sure we realize that it's a, it's a light edge over there, I'm going to darken the background right at the edge. Because the light is coming from this direction, right? So the more I make this hard and crisp, the more we will read that as a light surface turning away from us. Now notice as I darken this background tone up against what was really almost the mid-tone with just a little bit of the, the white chalk, it starts to get brighter and brighter because it has that simultaneous contrast with the black behind it. So you can work this white up to the edge, but don't actually have white along the edge unless it's actually a rim light. When this is a form light like this, we want to make sure that there's always a little bit of that turning away. A little bit of that turning away. See that? These basic principles of of the a difference between a soft form shadow, where we have it, the shadow is defined. There's definitely an, a point at which that, that shadow ends and at what point the, the mid-tones begin, but it's still soft. And then in that differentiation between that and a cast hard shadow, um, this is how we can really show the viewer, the person looking at your drawing, you help them navigate that space better. So you'll notice I never erase in the shadow. If I want to make this reflected light pop a little bit, I'll darken this occlusion shadow a little bit more, the cast shadow. See how that now lightens up the bottom. You're never erasing out of those shadows. You're only darkening up areas to pop. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna darken up the cast shadow a little bit over here. But I'm gonna have the white trail off. And again, because of simultaneous contrast, It'll basically, oops, <laughs> wrong chalk. It'll basically make it so the 
the contrast is a little bit less over here and it will feel like the light source is falling off in that direction if you lessen this over time. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, where we block in the shadow, we make it all one mass at first. Make it all together so when you squint the darks all come together and then you can come back and and darken up your pit shadows, your details, your features.